have seven other selves now. You can access each other's knowledge, language, skills. In a Manhattan apartment, Dr. M. Tom Mordred has stood guard between our world and the dark dimensions. Now, after centuries of waiting, evil's ultimate warrior has arrived. I'm Nick fucking This Organized Chaos podcast is brought to you by Gems Art Studio. This podcast is also brought to you by listeners like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to another Organized Chaos podcast. You have once again chosen the best podcast ever in the existence of all podcasts. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. We, we we are famous for having zero technical issues <laughs> ever. Um, everything goes without a hitch in every single episode. Congratulations. Infamous, I dare say. <laughs> Infamous. Uh the other voice you hear is Bobby Quarters. Bobby, how you doing? I am doing quite well, Bob. How are you? I'm I'm doing well, you know. Yeah. Work. Yeah. And movie watching. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, movie watching, it, it, it's nice to get back into it. I mean, I, it's not like I did not enjoy, you know, like, it. it it's when you told me I had to listen to mm-hmm. Pink Floyd uh, massively for, what, like, you probably told us, like, yeah. told me about a month in advance or so. Yeah, I really wasn't. Well, we knew a little bit ahead of. Yeah, him yeah, before, but I mean, yeah. I wasn't upset by it, <laughs> by any means. Yeah. <laughs> oh God damn! Oh, that was I mean, I think God I groaned about like the final cut, but mm. I ended up appreciating it more. <laughs> it's it's yeah, yeah. We talked about that one last week. So if you want to catch up on our Pink Floyd thoughts, and last week is and, where you and you go. could also <laughs> hear our hot takes on a band called Wish You Were Here as well. Yes, yes, an excellent cover. Yes, band. Uh, but we got some cool stuff to talk about today. Uh, we got four more episodes of yes, Sensei to catch up on. Doctor Mordred, which is an interesting anomaly of a movie, fits into our Doctor Strange uh, yeah. like movies, which of course we've already covered Doctor Strange nineteen seventy eight, and we've already covered Doctor Strange twenty sixteen, and we've covered Doctor Strange yeah. Love. And yeah, now now we got Dr. Mordred before we get to Dr. Yeah. Strange 2. <laughs> and then we're covering Nicolas Cage's, uh, what was it? The Unbearing Weight of Massive <laughs> Talent, a whole title that usually throws me for a loop. I usually just cut it, call it uh, Massive Talent. That, that, that Nick Cage um, movie but where yeah. he plays himself. Not face off. <laughs> got it. That was a tough role for him to play. Oh. That was, whew. <laughs> But yeah, we will be talking about that at the end. But yeah, got some fun yeah, stuff to do. talk about. Uh, Array to roll right oh, yeah. Sensei. <clears throat> All right. Sensei. Uh, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So I had to I had to binge watch these last night because I usually fall behind on this stuff because I procrastinate. Same. Spoiler. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, better watch through these four episodes. But I will have to admit, like, fairly quickly watching, like, just binging these, I was losing track of which episode I was on and just kind of enjoying it. This is this yeah, is a cool this, series. Th- <laughs> this story really has a great way of, like, just capturing the viewer's attention and, I mean, and mm-hmm. still tell a narrative, like, continual storyline while still building every character that they're switching back, back and forth to. It, it it's it's yeah. really intriguing how they do how the writers and like the team the creative team behind it pulls this off. This is it, it. I'm really impressed every week or every time we watch an episode or have to watch one. Like mm-hmm. I enjoy it. I'm just massively enjoying the story too. It's even unraveling for me as a first time viewer. Um, <clears throat> I knew there was some at least evil evil corporation, and I was right about that. Uh, oh, the yeah. level oh, yeah. of their uh, evil, uh, or I guess, um, I guess, villainly or v- villainy, yeah, 
Yeah. yeah villainy. Yeah. That's um uh Jesus Christ, these people are evil. Fuck. Yeah, it gets you really start seeing mm-hmm. how dark it gets. I, I had forgotten how like embedded they were with the the no me storyline yeah. because yeah, I, I just thought that her parents were doing CD shit, but it turns out, yeah, there's definitely stuff behind the scenes, which we got hints <clears> of, but yeah. Yeah, we kind of... Like, the big bad guy is definitely involved with all yeah, of that. Um, um, absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm kind of liking how we're seeing more of the characters being bridged together. The eight, the eight mm-hmm. obviously. Because um, we got... Yeah. They kind of unraveled more about th- these characters and what their connection is, but... They they kind of lay a lot of it out, but they haven't really spelled it out yet. <laughs> and yeah, I... uh, let's see. Going o- let's see. Going over the the main stories, God, because they all have their own story. So you have Leto. I'm not gonna lie. Whenever I'm thinking of the eight, I always think of him last, and I'm not sure why. But Leto is an actor who's a very yeah. famous actor. He's a Spanish actor who is uh, he's gay. But he, that's not public knowledge. He has a, a he has a beard. He has a girlfriend um, who's into watching them. So a perfect relationship. Yeah, right there. <laughs> everyone's happy and everyone but, has satisfaction. Yes, exactly. Go yes. on, Mick Jagger. <laughs> but yeah, but of course it gets weird because she has an ex boyfriend who is psycho and stole her phone and she took um photos. That she probably shouldn't have taken. She yeah, she kind of invaded uh, a very private moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well, yes. first, and now you're, he's you're getting... forgetting. Uh, before this, he did request to uh, watch uh, Leto, right? Yeah. The actor, yes. Uh, he he asked the actor yeah. and uh, his ex to uh, make love in front of him. He wanted to watch them so yeah. he could learn and be better at because that's what he thought or why he thought she left him like this guy's kind of having a breakdown in their yeah. living room and it's just kind of more of like yeah i would be like look dude i don't that's your problem how the fuck did you get in here yeah <laughs> listen dude there are plenty of, you didn't work i get it she's hot she seems fairly cool <laughs> you guys didn't work you need to move on you need to move on I, I I get it. You get you're wrapped up with her, but move you the fuck the hell on, off dude. my couch, Seriously. please. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm more than happy to see if we can help you out with help because I'm sure Lido has yeah. the money. But you need to get the fuck out of our place. <laughs> <laughs> Step one, get yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, that that devolves, and she does go back to him because. Uh, he blackmails yeah. Leto, saying he'll expose the photos. And, of course, Leto's boyfriend is not cool with the fact that he's willing to sacrifice her, like, life. I mean, obviously, I don't think the guy would kill her. Of course he might. He is he is abusive. Yeah, and the, um, the character, or, like, the tension I've noticed between uh, Leto and his boyfriend in this is, like, Leto's having a hard time, like, accepting like whom he is, like why he, it's not known that he's yeah. gay, which it's a choice he has to make, you know, and when he's yeah. ready, he will. But I, I see the conflict that they're using for it, but it's definitely something that mm-hmm. they've been hinting at with like all these segments involving Leto in that storyline. I've noticed mm-hmm. that they've definitely been hinting on that like every yeah. time. And it's just like, man, they're really building on that. I wonder when they're going to like fully pay this off or, what's going to result of mm-hmm. this. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah. it's definitely a thing. Well, like the boyfriend left him cause he, he's not comfortable with the choice being her life or yeah. his career. It's like, obviously just come out in public and see what happens. And of course, part of the point is that, you know, he's in, uh, Mexico, I believe. I think, yeah, I think he's, he's in a Spanish country. I want to say mm-hmm. Spain, but I'm not sure. It might be Spain. Okay. But yeah, it, it's not as no, publicly. No, 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 uh, I, I, I might be wrong. Yeah, I'm, I think I am. I'm gonna check. Okay, it might be. I'm Spain. not sure. But uh, yeah, but obviously the country is less uh, cool with it. It's gone to a point I feel like in the United States where actors come out as gay fairly regularly, and it's kind of just become yeah. a thing. Uh, it's kind of interesting to look back because it wasn't that long ago it would have been a big deal for an actor to come out as gay in the United States. 
Uh, and we have come a long way in probably like 10 or 20 years or so. So I guess some culture war wins. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm seeing also seeing things listing him as a Mexican. He lives character. in Mexico City. Is, mm. It is Mexico. Okay, so it is, my mistake. He does live in my Mexico, mistake. But yeah. He's from Spain. He's from Spain. Oh, no. Yes. No, I wasn't sure. Some of this yeah, stuff yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So I was curious too about it. All right. Lots of characters' details. I do think <clears> this stuff is interesting, but there's lots of character details. I don't. I try to pick up on them. This is my second time through, and I yeah. don't know them all down yet. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much his story in a nutshell, and it's interesting. Um,. But yeah, uh, let's see what some of the other characters. Will is mainly at this point kind of like being romantic with uh, his one of the other sensates being Riley. And uh, yeah, investigating the stuff with Nomi that he got caught into with uh, that Jonas brought up to yeah. him, which is interesting. I feel like he had less to do this, these four seasons, these four episodes other than uh Guy kind of get romantic with Riley and get that awkward scene where he's 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 making out with her, but of course she's not actually there. <laughs> yeah, that was actually kind of funny. Guys, like, uh, like what doing? are you doing? Nothing. No, yeah, yeah, nothing. <laughs> what? He's actually becoming one of my favorite characters. The cops, the cop. He, yeah. He's, yeah, he is yeah. definitely one of my favorites because he. he mm-hmm. well, I can what, tell there's... that there's a lot of the other officers there who really don't aren't like. Morally, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like on that same tier as him, and I like that he has a good. Yeah, sense. well, he's definitely an example of a mm-hmm. good cop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, obviously, Nomi is a major character. Oh yeah, we meet Bug in these four episodes. Bug's an interesting yeah. character. Uh, he's kind of cool, but yeah, he's he's got eccentricities. I don't even know exactly how to describe him. He's almost a character you have to watch to 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 get the impact yeah because bug is uh he's a fella <laughs> yes he is a person but he seems he seems fairly yeah. cool he seems <laughs> i mean yeah I, I think the closest i get to describing him is the first time he met uh know me he's like hey where's michael oh, well, i'm michael oh damn michael you're hot <laughs> it's like Okay, <laughs> is this is this where we're launching from? Yeah, it's like, I don't mean that in a degrading way or anything. It's like, who's this? Your girlfriend? Yeah. Really, man? <laughs> all right, all right. And it's just like, oh, <laughs> holy <God>. shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know if this is the best conversation, sir. But you know, you do you. You know, <laughs> I love an introduction, bug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, well, Nomi and uh, her girlfriend do get the the most intense. Scene yeah, of they these do. Four episodes because yeah, they're with Bug. They're hacking into the doctor who's doing the surgery on her. Leads them to uh, the one guy's place. The one doctor that her uh, mother her found. Yeah, yeah, the one doctor. Yeah, that, but that dangerous. And <laughs> yeah, but also leads her to this guy who essentially got lobotomized through the yeah. surgery she was going to get. And while they're visiting this doctor, that guy shows up on, like, a fucking kill spree, even though he was just, like, a vegetable when they saw him earlier. Yeah, like, unresponsive. And, yeah. Totally. Like, they were snapping, mm-hmm. waving their hands, trying to shake him. Nothing. Yeah. Like, dude was a vegetable. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was a big fucking hulk of a dude. He breaks in, fucks, fucks shit up, and kills himself. Of course, when Noe sees him kill himself, she sees somebody else's reflection in the mirror. Which is obviously our, our big bad, uh, at least of this season. I don't remember how long he's along for, but yeah, he's a creepy fucking dude. Yeah, Even... uh, the uh, bad guy in this one is, uh... yeah, I don't like him. <laughs> he, he gives me no, some bad no. vibes. Yeah. Well, it really seems like what he's essentially doing is lobo- giving people these lobotomy surgeries to kind of make like an army that he can mind control. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how that works, since you can't really do that unless they're part of your sensate. So I don't know if that guy was part of his sensate or he figured out a loophole. He might have. It's fucked I don't up. know. I mean, they kind of really left us. They, they These increments we're watching them in, they really leave them in cliffhanger moments. So we're really not sure of like what yeah. exactly is going on. I like it, though. I know. It gets <laughs> trippy. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Well, I like how, like, essentially you just have these eight people who have a psychic connection to each other. And at first you're like, okay, I'm not sure how they do stuff with that. But as you watch, it's like, yeah, 
they definitely figure out ways to work with that. <laughs> it's a definitely an interesting they premise. Do. <laughs> I mean, hey, there's an orgy scene. There is uh, a giant, <laughs> a, a, a giant orgy scene, which is something I yeah. honestly was mm-hmm. not expecting. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. What like like I, two of the sensei were were going at it, and then like two more got like roped in, and all of a sudden they're all like psychically Meanwhile, doing. Meanwhile, Victor's <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> he was yeah, just yeah. chilling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was chilling. Yeah, uh, definitely an actor who's comfortable with. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I. It seemed familiar. You see a lot of them, but I was like, oh yeah. That's a front butt. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's but, a uh, dawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, that that's a close up. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> We're doing it. But yeah, he he he's definitely the other one. He's getting uh well well Will and Riley are getting romantic, but he definitely has a thing going with uh Kala from yeah. India who is supposed to get married, but he like the introduction of his front butt or as you call dong. it a dong which is a weird name it's a front butt yeah, you're right. <laughs> but anyways the introduction of that is what she sees to distract her and uh cancel the wedding and delay that <laughs> yeah which does bring up an interesting question so she sees uh wolfgang's uh package and apparently she passes out and they have to like carry her to bed uh, redress her in her pajamas and she's out throughout that whole thing just from seeing a dong <laughs> yeah i thought that was interesting <laughs> yeah that's like okay that's it's okay i guess she was impressed sure <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, let's see so has, is there anybody we haven't brought up uh we brought up i like all the we characters brought up the dj yeah and yeah the cop who the, then it is confirmed that her name is from Baba Holly. Yeah, Alley. yeah. <laughs> I, I I thought that was cool. And the scene reunited yeah. with her father was really cool. Because like I heard the song, I was like, I know this song. And then like yeah. we said the second verse, I was like, it's all right. The who? That's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh yeah, we have Rob's son who is now going to uh, prison yeah. for. Uh, crimes her brother committed because she is sacrificial and her brother is like the face of the company yeah that's so yeah bullshit. life's fair for that's her <laughs> yeah she is spending her time beating the crap out of some people who are being nasty though so i guess doing some good in prison i guess <laughs> <laughs> it, it did kind of remind me of that batman scene yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're taking you away for protection <laughs> what I don't need protection from them. Protection Not protection for, for you. Protection yeah, for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's the impression you're getting. Because she's she's small, but she kicks serious ass. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure she also would have whooped the crap out of her brother if given the opportunity. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, there's also that great scene where uh, Nomi's trying to get away and she's surrounded by the cops. Yeah. And literally, like, Sun takes over her body, and then Sun can see Will, and Will's giving her yeah. advice on how the cops are going to he's approach gonna, her. He's left-handed. He's going to reach for your right hand now. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. like, that was like, <laughs> it's like oh, oh they're my working. God. All right, they're working in tandem. That's that's fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's little stuff like that where you really see how like this psychic connection could be really fucking useful. It's like I dig yeah. it. I'm trying to think. Did we? I mean, we brought off Wolfgang, obviously. Well, okay. Well, it's Wolfgang's dong. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we did bring up Wolfgang. I, I thought his name was Victor. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. We need to talk about him, though, because, uh, like, his childhood friend uh, is in the hospital in critical yeah, condition because uh, the gangsters that uh, they stole from found yeah. him and and shot him in the chest with a shotgun. I'm shocked he's still too. alive, honestly. I'm I am too. I'm su- yeah, I, I just I'm remember. Su- First watching it, I was like, oh, God. I was gone. like, oh, <laughs> oh, well, I remember think watching it and thinking about the guys in the van, like when it showed them again, like, yeah, I'd be pumping that again because he's going to murder you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's going <laughs> to fuck you up. Oh, yeah. I would also be driving away, too. Mm-hmm. And then, what? Oh, yeah. And uh, Van Damme yeah. 
uh, Cathy, yeah. I want to say his name is. I keep on calling him Van Dam because of his love. Of yeah, Jonathan Van Dam. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he agreed. I believe at the end of the fourth episode to or it was the beginning was of the fifth. No, it was the beginning yeah, of the fifth where he agreed, where he met up and agreed. Uh, he's going to use his bus to transport this essentially huge crime lord's uh, daughter back and to forth school. to her medical, yeah, to her medical treatments. treatments. Yeah. yeah, and that's right. Yeah, because like. And it's kind of it. Well, you see how mixed it is for him because, like, we, he agrees to do it because fucking money and treatment yeah. for his mother. Uh, yeah, but like you see, like he does like the daughter, and he and the daughter have a nice relationship. Yeah. But also, the father is a complete fucking monster. Yeah, <laughs> that's proven in one scene. That's really dramatic. <laughs> Yeah, he pulls he pulls him aside and he says, uh, "Hey, this is a guy who fucked with me," and straight up just t- puts on an apron, cuts off the guy's hands. Just and he he personally does this, and he's like, "Now this guy knows what I'm about," and the unwritten thing is, "Now you do too." Yeah. And you and that's when he starts saying, "Okay, I can't do this anymore." And you see, it's kind of heartbreaking because you see he goes home. And his mom is doing so much better. She's up and about. She's making dinner. Uh, and he has to tell her, yeah, I can't continue this for you. <laughs> but, yeah. I like, I like all these characters. I like all these stories. I like it, I like it in particular when the stories can link up. Um, like, like the other big scene. Although, I... I this was less than I th- was hoping for, but it was still kind of cool when Will has a shootout and then Leto has a shootout scene in his movie. And you see them linking up here and there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, overall, yeah, this is a great series. This is a series where I'm like, oh, yeah, we need to catch up on Sensei. And then I sit down and watch. I'm like, God, this is God, Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> I, I, I'm already waiting just for all of them to be together. Like, that's kind of what I'm wanting yes, right now. Yes, I'm sure I just that's going to happen. Yeah. To be together. I assume there'll be some sort of finale where they all pop up, but yeah. Just where they're all uh, together, kicking ass yeah. together. <laughs> yeah, they get their Avengers Yeah, moment. yeah. <laughs> well, I think their Avengers moment will probably be breaking Sun out of jail. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Oh, I'm pretty sure she but, can yeah. just like, mm. get out on her own. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she's... I don't think she'd have much... She doesn't need a whole lot yeah, of help. I, th- I can't imagine her needing much help. I think she could probably get Batman run for his money. Jesus. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, any final thoughts on this before we move on to uh, Doctor Strange ish? As Doctor I like to call Strange ish. <laughs> no, I'm I'm good. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that brings us to Doctor Mordred, Master of the Unknown, which I kept on. I think I kept on calling Doctor Mordred. I kept calling it Doctor Mortis. Yeah, it's Doctor Strange ish. Uh, to get the full story, this is a movie, uh, guy, okay, I put it in my notes, I don't remember the name of the guys, but it was like this brothers team, uh, okay, the band brothers, uh, had the option for a Doctor Strange movie, so they, they wrote it all out, got ready to go, but then the option expired, so they couldn't do a Doctor Strange movie, and they said, well, let's rework this, and just do our own thing. And thus we end up with Doctor Strangis, also known as Doctor Mordred, uh, starring Jeffrey Combs, who is an actor who I am always up to see more of. Oh, uh, more Jeffrey Combs is always better. You can never fail if you cast Jeffrey Combs. Period. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is definitely the type of movie I want to do. Like the podcast felt like a good opportunity to explore some of these movies I've never had a chance to watch. And I just never have time. So I do a podcast. Now I have excuses to force myself to watch some of these movies. And this is one I have mixed feelings about. Well, I know you were texting me. What were your feelings on this I one? I really Bobby? enjoyed it for its campiness. <laughs> yeah, no. I When it was campy, I loved it. Um, yeah, yeah. I will tell you what I... My, my two favorite things in this movie are Jeffrey Combs, obviously, because Jeffrey Combs. Yeah. Um, and also when it would go into like the cheesy dated special effects. I love that. Stuff. Oh, yeah. That was just marvelous. Um, uh, the uh, overacting yeah. by the uh, goons, the bad guy goons. Like, yeah. I, I loved yeah. And that and like the guy. <laughs> I was like best character in the whole movie. 
What Brian Brian Thompson's name? The actor, right? I think. I yeah, he it. played the uh, lackey, yeah. the guy lackey, <laughs> mm. who uh, pretty much later got hypnotized but, or uh, zo- or zombified. <laughs> yeah, well, there's this. There is a goon that like gets like uh, immortal powers, and I sort of God, he looks like Andrew Garfield. If this was he a made in 1992, I'd be like, that's fucking yeah, Andrew. Garfield. He does totally then, look like Andrew Garfield. <laughs> It's like, how is that not Andrew Garfield? Oh, Andrew Garfield was ten when this. Oh, is was that made. His, is it that looks like him though. <laughs> uncle? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I could see easily yeah, uh, a lot of the uh, Doctor Strange like roots to this. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. absolutely oh, yeah. down to the costuming, the set design of the how the home in Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean. Mm-hmm. God's sakes. <laughs> I assume they I assume they fudged the script a little bit so it wasn't the Sanctum Centorum, so instead he's a landlord with apartments. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> kind of like oh, okay. But but like the, also, the main I villain believe, I also do believe that a landlord would have the unit that's like that in a building in New York. Like I absolutely Yeah, that's oh, yeah. that that, oh, yeah. that part was one hundred percent believable. Like, wait, this is your mm-hmm. place? What the hell? I remember uh, when play like uh, the apartment. No, two apartments before this, uh, we got one of the first units that was built. But the la- like there are other units being built, so we could walk around and see the, like how they were yeah. looking. And we found the landlord's unit, and it was like it like on the outside it looks exactly the same, except it's gonna have like a fully furnished basement with an extra oh, get bathroom the fuck out and like all fancy and shit. And it's like, of course it get is. The fuck of course. <laughs> It's like sure, sure. <laughs> I wonder which one he's gonna live in. <laughs> but yeah, uh, God, yeah. This movie, I like it, but when it drags for me, it drags. Um, so much of this subplot is spent doing kind of nothing. I felt yeah. There's the bad guy doing bad things. <laughs> there, <laughs> and then there's this whole subplot with him in jail, and he just has. Then to Then there's out. a Shao Kahn, oh my, just uh... Shao Kahn, and. Yeah, that's all yeah. I saw. I saw just all oh, Shao Kahn's in this. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's one of those things. When I enjoy this movie, yeah. I enjoy it. <laughs> but yeah, I think Brian Thompson. Well, I think it's worth noting. I also was thinking about the difference because I think Brian Thompson, who's the main villain here, mm-hmm. who I think is a great B movie actor. And I want to make a, a difference between that and someone like Jeffrey Combs. Who I don't think is uh, as a great B movie actor. I think of as a great yeah, actor. Yeah, I, I. Who happens to be? Who in just B happens movies. to do a lot of B movies? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So technically, he's a B movie actor, but God, he's just fucking. Well, good. he is he's a great just... actor. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, yeah. Herbert West is his most like famous. I'd say like role that it, like I know him the best from. Well. Actually, that's that. That's kind of inaccurate. That's that's one of his most beloved roles by me. Uh, the role that I first knew him from was uh, the Frighteners, where he played a special investigative detective who was just all kinds of batshit crazy. Mm-hmm. Just you see, I I oh I pri- yeah, <laughs> but I primarily know him from Star Trek, where. Like, he plays, like, so many goddamn characters in Star Trek. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but they're all either straight-up villains or, like, good guys who are, like, seedy <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> and it's like, I love all of them. They're great in all their own ways. Yeah. <laughs> but here, like, I would argue, in a lot of ways, the way this is scripted, this character isn't too much different from how, like, the one in 78 would be written. It's not a whole lot to him. But Jeffrey Combs makes this character so much more he does. interesting. And I think a lot of it like, is, like, and, we get a lot of great reads from him in this movie. Yeah. I mean, he's he's just essentially just playing the hero here, but it, it's, it works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think... Um, But yeah, 
I think that'd be my biggest takeaway from this. I really like Jeffrey Combs. Like, and I, I brought up comparing it to the 78 one. I want to also state this one has a much better oh, production yeah. uh, than the 78 oh. one. Uh, this is actually a fairly good production, We get, like, say. many great special effects scenes as opposed to just one. Yeah. <laughs> There's literally one shot in that 78 one where it's like, eh, that's kind of interesting. And here it's like, yeah, no, this he's, is actually a fairly pro- professional. He's, thing. Yeah, yeah, the whole 78 <laughs> one's like, he's standing in front of a projection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess it's better than the rest of the movie, but yeah, okay. <laughs> it was the best part of that movie. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. It was the one shot where I'm like, oh. Well, no, no. Okay. I, I enjoyed every scene when he was like a doctor and, you know, just being a dick to everybody in the room. Sure, sure. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to brain fart right here. I think it's really going to Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, there's not a whole lot to this story, unfortunately. Uh, the main villain is, of course, uh, Mordo because he brings up how they were trained together in the yeah. Mystic Arts. Uh, to ch- differentiate from Doctor Strange as well, this guy's like 100 to 150 years old. I don't think they really specify, but somewhere in that range. Mm. Yeah, they kind of just say like eons, I think, in the in the 2016 Doctor Strange. I, I'm trying to remember if they actually oh. specify how old. No, they don't. No, no, never mind. Yeah, I don't know how old uh, Mordo would be, but like Doctor Strange is just like, what, probably like, or no, 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 not strange. Not strange. Yeah, I was thinking Mordo. Because like, I don't think they... Yeah, Mordo's yeah. not clear. Ancient one's pr- supposed to be pretty old. Yeah, but, but they yeah. didn't specify that one or Wom either, but I'd say Wom's in his like 40s. No. Yeah, probably, yeah. Maybe he might be a bit older than Strange. Yeah. In fact, probably. But he still likes to go out. Yeah, no, I don't think he's... No, like no, no, he still I mean, seems youthful. He goes out and sings karaoke, you know. He has fun. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> That's right. They did that yeah. in Shang Chi. Yeah, I, I heard. He, <laughs> yeah, I hear he does a really great hotel, California. Yeah, yeah, I've heard rumors of that one too. <laughs> Honestly, with that, I was I was genuinely surprised that Henley cleared that. <laughs> I mean, as yeah. as an Eagles fan, I was like, "Wow, okay, okay, Don." Yeah, all right. <laughs> Yeah, Henley, uh, Henley in particular will get kind of uh, ridiculous with his copyright. And I get shit. it. I get it. It's his creative. Yeah, it's his well, creative thing. And before they, you know, when they left Geffen, you know, that was like part of the big thing. Like they didn't own their music. So mm-hmm. I, I get it. <laughs> I get it, but also I think he takes it way. Oh, he too absolutely far. does. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, what, what, why does Don Henley not even have a YouTube channel? Um, huh. I it's, mean, that's just easy money. Uh, yeah, here's easy, a good point <laughs> since we're on the topic. All right, I'm opening up my YouTube mm-hmm. music app, all right? And I'm going to type in mm-hmm. the Eagles, all right? Now, I see a lot of songs like Lion Eyes, I Can't Tell You Why, Hotel California, are off of some, like, mass-generated greatest hits album, right? Like one that I could tell mm-hmm. wasn't one, or Legacy hit, Legacy Edition. Yeah, it looks like that. But if I want to go to the very best of the Eagles. Which woman is gone. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Like. Witchy woman yeah, is gone? Yeah, witchy woman, tequila sunrise, desperado. Oh, uh, the mm. best of my love, on the border, lion eyes, one of these nights, take it to the limit, after the thrill is gone. Oh, that's such a good one, too. Hotel California, life in the fast line, wasted time, victim of love. Last resort, heartache tonight, the sad cafe. I can't tell you why. The long run, those shoes. Love will keep us alive. Get get over it and a hole in the world. Wow. But mm. hey, you know what they do have in the city? Fucking Joe Walsh. Oh good. That Yeah. Hey, Joe Walsh. <laughs> I'm I'm satisfied mm-hmm. with Joe Walsh anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Well we're definitely on a, a on a, a side are. rant. But yeah. Don Henley loosen up on the yes. copyright please uh i understand holding some but like well he he was also famously testified before congress that youtube needs stricter copyright laws or rules and i'm like get yeah, fuck. Fun, i'm like yeah. dude don't, yeah don't you have enough already man <laughs> yeah i tell you what when there's actual copyright issues then complain but a lot of the stuff you're complaining about no no let it go <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> but yeah, but yeah, Doctor Mordred. Uh, I think you liked it more than me. I thought it's fine, but yeah, I definitely would prefer more. I think I would prefer. It's a, probably a budget issue, but I prefer more magic shit than the let's get out of the police station shit, which I felt like dominated so it much. It did. It, I will <laughs> say that it did hurt this movie. I mean, it it, it mm. didn't help it. I, I kind of wish that he would have yeah. used like more deception, if you will, to like get mm-hmm. out of the police station and magic. Yeah. That would have yeah, been no. really cool. I was kind of when it was like, oh, I need to get out. I was like, well, this could be cool. I'm... Maybe like do like a whole bunch of tricks and stuff. No, it was literally just one. I mean, trick. If it... flash this thing and they'll they'll brain freeze. For yeah, like no, that you was know? like, wow, that's plot convenient. And then they just yeah. kept using they are, it. We're going to do yeah. that like a hundred times. That, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it was Doctor Strange, he just would have, you know. <laughs> and Yeah, he just dumb, wore all out there. Dumb. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, I, I do like the main battle. I damn disappoint how quickly the main guy is taken out. He was taken out so quickly, I was thinking, is there going to, like, there's got to be a post credit scene where it's like, oh, he's not dead. Nope, but no. Just ends. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's like, Oh, we got these big uh, skeletons attacking each other. Dinosaur skeletons, a mammoth, and uh, a T-Rex fighting each other. The bad guy gets stabbed by the mammoth. And we're yep. done. <laughs> I mean, that... that, that, that and I do love... That was kind of cool. <laughs> I love the... I do, lo- yeah, I love it, and I love the T Rex when it's going after the guards and killing the guards, and how it's clearly a ca- claymation guard in the <laughs> yeah. T Rex's mouth for that one shot. That was kind of beautiful. Was <laughs> it's like, oh no, Mr. Ooh. Bill! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is a uh, this is better than seventy eight. This isn't great, but this is this is all right. Um. If you're really, really desperate for a Doctor Strange movie, I guess this this is probably better than Lava this kind of suffices. But... All right, yeah. All right, are we ready for massive talent? In fact, are we ready for an unbearable weight of massive talent? <laughs> oh, you're yes. quiet again. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to see like the delay because yeah. on the feed that I see, which is in the big window. Oh, now I'm just coming back. So that's mm-hmm. probably like a 20 second, almost 30 second delay. Oh, wow. Oh, mm. well, it's it's laggy, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is one we decided to talk about because it's it looked like fun. And yeah, it was. This, this was, was actually fun. <laughs> way fun, like a lot more fun in the theater than I was expecting to have with this movie. <laughs> mm. Oh, well. I will say this. Uh, I don't know if I've laughed at anything as much as that LSD yeah. scene. Oh, my yeah, God. It's, like, well, <laughs> it's been a long time since I laughed that much yeah. in the theater. <laughs> well, it, I, I saw this with a friend, actually. And uh, while we were like we were talking about it afterwards, and it was like, yeah, as soon as he said we need to stare into the cosmos, I knew exactly where that joke was going. I was like, you know, I kind of had a feeling it was going in that direction. And then he pulled out that file, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, that's the direction I thought it was going. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, yeah, I think oh, I think he and I so... even said like <laughs> I was gonna just say LSD aloud, and I was like, yeah, I had that thought too, but I decided mm-hmm. not to since we had like when we got to our seats, there was literally a group of people on one side and another group of a group of people on the other side, and two seats right in the middle of both of those groups. <laughs> And it looked like yeah. the type of groups that, yeah, we shouldn't be, uh, have, they'd probably give us a look if we knew what that was, like where that joke was going. So we were mm. like, yeah, no, well, just, yeah, keep our head on that one and laugh with everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> that part was really hilarious. Um, I also knew from the trailer uh, when he was looking at that mannequin of uh, himself with uh, from Face Off with the two gold pistos, I knew yeah. like, Man, those pistols are definitely going to come into play at some point in this movie. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. even like one of the trailers I saw, it highlighted them the same way they did in the film. Like it was the opening shot of the trailer. Mm. And it was like, ooh, I hope Nick Cage gets to wield those in this movie. And he does. <laughs> and it pays off so well. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, we should probably cover a little should, bit of story yes. here. Uh, although the story is kind of uh, in the trailer. But yeah, we have Nicolas Cage successful actor not doing the best of movies recently and 
you can definitely tell it's a, a, a character of Nicolas Cage, but I, it works so yeah, well it, for him. It is definitely like, like a character representation of him. Like a kind of an, I yeah. want to say an almost not quite an extreme version of him, but like, no, definitely exaggerated. Yeah, well, that Too I many. love the. Uh, there is an extreme version in his head that pops up. That is like super not great. early nineties Nick Cage. Yeah, that. Oh my. Yeah, who was I, I, over the top? Yeah, as I might have laughed a little too hard at that the first time. <laughs> Yeah, I I love that. Might be my favorite character in the movie. Just the character in his head of Nick his Cage. His ultra ego. <laughs> Nick motherfucking Cage. Cage. I was just like, oh wow, he is fully committed. <laughs> this is great. Yes. Uh, no, it was. It's the other it's joke wonderful. that I did laugh was like much later in the movie where he's talking about a belt buckle. I was like, yeah, I went with a tarantula, and the first the guy was gonna say the bees. I'm like, no, no, not the bees, the bees, the bees. I think me and my friend yeah, were the nice. only two who laughed at that. And then more people started that, laughing. That was a good one. Yeah, I, that, I that, liked that one. I liked that one. Like, yeah, laughed a little too loud at that one, but that was really funny. But Jesus Christ, not the bees. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was not good. <laughs> yeah. But we also yeah. see him meeting for a part. Like, it's it starts off, well, well it starts oh, yeah. off with a couple and we see them watching, uh, what was it? It was Con Air. Yeah, it was the end of Con Air, yeah. Yeah, it was Con Air. And they're just like, yeah, Nick Cage is the fucking man. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. yeah, it, which, as any fan of him would probably think at that point in that movie, because you watch and go, yeah, he's the fucking man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it starts with a kidnapping scene to like a, a very yeah. tender moment in that when they're playing that love song from uh, that movie. I can't remember the name of the song, but I remember it was inescapable when it came out. Yeah. Oh, God, I, I wanted to bring that up, too, because it was a very violent <laughs> scene. And it was a hell of a contrast. Which I love <laughs> it. I love when they do that in cinema. I do, because I, it, oh, it, yeah. it's, I think it's meant to set the audience either to be highly entertained by whatever's happening or kind of make them feel just very mm-hmm. uncomfortable. But when they make you feel uncomfortable... I really enjoy that, and I'm very much entertained by just I wow the filmmaker. That's a, that's a decision. That's a choice, and I'm I'm here for it. And I kind of probably get the same level of enjoyment as uh, the filmmaker would, as in the un, how uncomfortable it made the audience. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm trying to look up. Uh, God, I, for, I keep on getting the score soundtrack. The score. What is that song? That's gonna drive. Uh, How do I? That's I, right. I, How do I? Yeah. yeah. It, it's inescapable now. <laughs> okay. Trisha, Trisha Yearwood. Yearwood. Okay, sure, yeah. Oh, my God. I was just going to say Shania Twain. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely sounds like one of those. Uh, <laughs> that was big in the 90s. One yeah, of those. That... Uh, country uh, well yeah they were ones. still trying to like you know capitalize on how popular alan jackson and garth brooks were in the early 90s all right yeah and that movie was that was in yeah. con air okay i was trying to remember i was like was that, that was in it? Con yes air? yes, <laughs> yes it very much was in con air it's been a while since i've done con air <laughs> it very much was in con air there's a lot more to it than you know uh the the beautiful uh, sweet home alabama joke which is yes, still something yes, that I find, absolutely yeah, Leonard Skinner which I still mm-hmm. find pretty funny, <laughs> and it's just because of yeah, yeah. delivery. <laughs> yeah, well, that movie has a hell of a cast too. I mean, fucking John Malkovich, uh, Bushimi, John God, Cusack. there's even more. That I'm not even remembering. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right, John Cusack. Shit. Um, was Ving Rhames one of the prisoners? Yes, he was. Seems familiar. He all, okay. Danny mm-hmm. Trejo. Yeah, that, the hell Danny of a cast Trejo now. was in there. That's right, I can't remember yeah. the actor's name, but the guy who played Bubba was in that from Forrest Gump. Oh, I can't, sure. I yeah. always forget his <laughs> name, but he, he's always so good. I, I can't either. Yeah. But yeah, God. Con, yeah. This has been a while for Con Air. I just, but and I, I think that we're not the off topic it, because so. Nicolas Cage is in Con oh. Air. And they do reference, well, they reference a lot of his films. I think the two they mostly reference more than anything in this are Face Off and Con Air. 
Yeah, Con Air gets hit hard at the beginning, but then throughout, it's I was I want to say most. There, there's face a off. there's a blatant um, face off like reference, uh, the stabbing in the thigh with the knife. Like that, yes, yes, yes. I remember thinking that. that yeah. and I was just like, oh, he didn't twist it. You know, like in hey, hey I see you. I had, yeah, like, Captain yeah. America moment. I understood that reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so he's an actor. He's been doing all this stuff, but he's not getting the gr- greatest press. Because let's face it, he hasn't done a lot of great movies recently. And I mean, <laughs> let's also face it. If we ever hear about Nicolas Cage in any source of media, it's either his outlandish drunken behavior, his spending habits, or him declaring bankruptcy. <laughs> but mostly yeah. his drunken spending habits kind of a mix it's, it's a hodgepodge yes. of all mm. of them i mean I, re- I remember seeing at least two mm. weeks in a row where he like drunken footage of him singing karaoke at a bar after a, after his most recent divorce and yeah. one like i think Smooth. one was in mm. las vegas and then the next day there was another one from reno <laughs> it's just oh nick yeah. oh but he's still saying mm. a great elvis Still saying a great yeah. elf. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think the movie picks up with Nicolas Cage, and he's talking to a uh, representative for a movie, a casting agent for a movie coming That's up. That's going to be in Boston. And, yeah, and he is, Nick is actually excited for this movie. He yeah. wants to be in it. <laughs> it's getting, it's. There is a reek of desperation on him. That, <laughs> that is, a and I mean, thing. if he was, if he would have left it as them leaving and go, like, I'd really, you know, oh, you don't have to read for me, Nick. All right, well, I'll be in touch. If he would have left it that, he probably yeah, would have had yeah. a good shot at it. Like, he probably still would have had it. Yeah. If he decided not, <laughs> oh no, no, to read. He read, <laughs> and he did the part, and he <laughs> went like full three hundred and fifty percent into it. <laughs> oh, 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 it was it was kind of yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, there was there was a reek to that one. Yeah, <laughs> it, was like, it was just uh, oh man. This is... I mean, when the guy said you don't have to read, I didn't even pick it up as like, yeah, you we're not interested. You don't have to read. I picked up as your Nick Cage. We know we what know we're you. getting. We, we, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and no, Nick was not happy with that answer. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, like, he even closed the guy's door yeah. after he opened it. <sighs> but we, we after and, that, yeah, we, we do see him, like, you know, riding back in the car with his younger alter ego self. And I think that's the first time that we get introduced yeah. to him. And this looks yes. like mm. super, super baby face, super young Nicolas Cage. Just yes. fully mm. unhinged Nick Cage. Like, yes. what was it? The uh, Bitten by a Vampire movie he was in? Or what was that? What was the vampire movie he was in? The, he did do something like Once that. Once Bitten, yeah, I, I think. What Was that it? Is it what? There, I'm trying to remember, because I want to say there's Once Bitten, and then there's, like, Vampire's yeah. Kiss. And one's Nick Cage, and one's Jim Carrey. I don't know. I think Once Bitten remember. is Jim Carrey. <laughs> Okay, but All in, right. in, either way, the uh, the Nick Cage vampire movie, like that level yes. of extreme, <laughs> magnified to a yes, thousand, yes, it... was what this younger alter ego the... was, and oh, it was it yeah, did not the... disappoint. Like that younger alter ego is the caricature of Nick Cage, and it was it was great to have that in yeah. this movie in a couple different scenes, which was great. It was <laughs> magic, just just absolute magic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he does have issues with his daughter and ex-wife. And, uh, well, he has issues with an ex-wife, but you you will have issues yes. with an ex-wife. It comes yes. to the territory. <laughs> but yeah, he's mainly trying to fix things up with his daughter, who is uh, kind of annoyed because obviously she's a teenager. She's in her own world, and she has a famous father who just wants to talk about his and, shit. Yeah, it's <laughs> and. It, I feel that this is the part of it where it becomes a, like a real character piece for him and like a character study of himself and him kind of just being like Definitely, that and yeah. I, of this alter ego character that we're seeing of Nick Cage in the film. And I think it's a mm-hmm. good of him to at least be open to exploring uh, his alter ego of himself on film like this. 
it, it, it's it's a cool thing that that I'm happy that he was at least willing to do, and also take a lot of playful jabs at himself too. Oh yeah, I'm, it's oh, cool yeah. that he was that he had the sense of humor to do so. Which everything I've ever seen mm-hmm. or read about him is he does seem like a really cool guy. Yeah, I mean, you can't do a movie like this and not have a sense of humor on your. Uh, on and yourself, it's after I yeah. saw this actually <laughs> earlier today. Uh, while I was uh, after I set, after I got done setting up uh, a little prematurely early, but I my method yeah. is I do, and I'll just kind of recap some stuff a little bit, like watch like clips mm-hmm. and segments and other people's hot takes on it and compare it to my own, but refresh myself with what mm-hmm. we uh, usually cover. But also, I do it just the social scroll too. And I did read an article er, that had an interview with Nicolas Cage promoting this movie. And it was a uh, funny mm-hmm. that most of the article was talking about how, you know, no one really ever offered me comedy roles before in the past. Like I, I have don't get offers for comedies that often at all. Yeah. And I'm kind of surprised why not, which is also a reason why I wanted to do this because I could do comedy. It's, it's comedies. As you see, I can do comedy. Yeah. I just like, I, mm-hmm. I am capable of that. And it was just like how he was just like, not really upset or angry about it. Just kind of surprised that he never got offered one before this. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. He had, has he done many comedies? I mean, obviously you have the Coen brothers stuff like raising. Her yeah. Son, and which maybe the, I think the vampire one was also a comedy. Cause I do remember seeing it when I was younger on comedy central. Um, mm-hmm. I guess the National Treasure, he could have a few quips every so often. Yeah, I mean, quips are a bit different. And like even Raising Arizona, which is definitely a comedy, the issue with that would be like, it's a comedy, but part of the comedy from that comes from the ridiculousness of the yeah. situation. It's actually played fairly yeah, straight. Yeah, it's mostly it? just situational comedy, like a lot, like a lot of Cohen yeah. movies are. I mean, The Big yeah. Lebowski's as a comedy, but no, that's kind of more of like a drama. But it just has, yeah, yeah it no, just has a narrative that carries through that is delivered with some comedic characters. Got, yeah, and interesting, interesting characters going through really, really weird, weird shit. stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, that's kind and of and one guy MO. just trying to figure it out, man, and he just wants his rug back. Yeah, but that's that. That's yeah, a conversation you, you... for another day. <laughs> Yeah, and Coen Brothers, it's the main character is usually the least. Yeah, weird. is the most normal <laughs> out of everyone. Yeah, they, they'll be weird. Well, but not, that would bring some interesting. <laughs> if if you think that about the Coen, then who is the most normal in No Country for Old Men? Well, that wasn't even no, that a copy, wasn't, though. The Coen Brothers movies have like that one theme that the main character is usually the most yeah. normal. Well, that's the thing. Who's the main character in that? It's either Tommy Lee Jones or Josh. Bolden. It's definitely not Javier's character. <laughs> no, no. Jesus Christ. He is terrifying. I'd say it's the shopkeeper. Mm. All right. All right. Well, to get to like the, the crust, crux of the stories here. Uh, so he has issues with his daughter. He has issues with his career. Uh, he obviously loses the movie role that he's clearly <laughs> thirsting for Dying. because... Yeah, when you act like that, you will lose it. <laughs> yeah, if you go that extreme, you will. But he, yeah, but he gets a deal uh, to go visit a super fan, a rich super fan, for a weekend for what a million or something like that. And he's like, "Yeah, sure, fuck it." You know, like... sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm and that that the is feed from the bigger one, and now it's to the point where oh, oh better oh, camera change time. <laughs> yeah. That That's is. A delay. <laughs> I mean, I thought OBS had a bad delay. I think it's like a second. I, I, <laughs> I hope it's not my Wi Fi and I hope it doesn't come through like that. Well, your your okay, feed right now looks fine. Now, we'll have to I mean, see what OBS see, records. Well, like, I see like the smaller window loop. that <laughs> has like the Bobby Quarter's name in it. And I assume that's what you're looking at too. Because I'm waving now. Problem. Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Good. No. That, sorry, yeah. No. Again, we never have any technical issues on this show, ever. No, no, no. We never ever. Diver- we nail we never it every time. What we're talking about and discussing te- said technical issues never. or whatever random topic happens to pop up in either of our heads, mostly mine. 
<laughs> Never. <laughs> no. But it's our dynamic, and it works. Just like Nicolas Cage. Mm-hmm. Yes, so yes, it does. He, yes, segue. Segue. <laughs> Safe. Safe. <laughs> so uh, he does get this <laughs> offer for a million. Well, first he uh, meets up with his uh, agent, uh, Barney Stinson, or Neil Patrick Harris, MPH, who has like yeah. such a subdued role. And how much I've seen him on the advertising, I'm surprised how much of a yeah, subdued yeah. role he has in this. Yeah, it's he has an important role, but it's not a particularly mm-hmm. big role. And I'm... He he essentially he's the middleman between him and Pedro Pascal. I can't remember the na- character's name, so I'm probably just gonna lapse to the actor's name. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he uh, want, uh, Pedro Pascal's character wants to uh, pay Nicolas Cage a million dollars just to hang out on his birthday at his place. Oh, and he also wants him to read a yeah. script, but his agent doesn't tell him that. Yeah, Nicolas Cage has no idea about that one. He's just thinking I'm and just get a million dollars and just be speech. you know Nicolas Cage. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Easy, yeah. easy gig. <laughs> but uh, he gets down there, and, and, and he realizes that this guy is really just a super fan. And, you know, he just happens to be super wealthy, yeah. but he's just a super fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and really, he wants him to read a script. He had no idea about it, so they spend a day hanging out, getting to know each other. Mm-hmm. Do, some, do LSD. some LSD. And they end up having, like, a really great day in a very epic uh, yeah. paranoid freakout moment in town, which was hilarious. <laughs> Oh my god! Like I but, don't even want to go into it because it's yeah, impossible to reenact. Th- there's so some good. <laughs> parts of that that they had the the camera framed like it was an action movie. I don't know if you noticed that at all. Yeah, yeah, I know. But like a, bit, a lot yeah, of that yeah. scene of like whenever they're running and freaking out, it was totally framed like mm-hmm. a Michael Bay action movie, and it was play. Oh yeah, it was a straight up action movie, and it's a. That's part of the funny because there's no chasing them. But they're, they're just freaking, freaking out. out. They're just high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just tripping and paranoid. I love the uh, "Gone in sixty seconds" yeah. bit at the end. <laughs> Where it's like you did all your driving. And, I did. Boom! Backed in. Backed in. Hit, drives up on the sidewalk. <laughs> crash! 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 Side of the building. <laughs> Oh my! God. Yeah. While driving on LSD, like no, 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 I can't drive. I'm acid, man. No. But I could do it in God, sixty seconds. I must You're be able right. to do it. I can. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> but then uh, Nicholas Cage gets picked up by the CIA. <laughs> Not even joking. Yeah. Not yes. even joking. <laughs> yeah. Turns out Pedro Pascal is a big drug runner, and they and he has kidnapped somebody. The kidnapped uh, woman we yeah. saw at the beginning of the movie, <clears throat> and they want his help to try to save her. And he's hesitant because he really likes yeah. Pedro Pascal. Their friendship is kind of the anchor of this movie. It works so well. There we. Go. But you know they bring up you know what if it were your daughter, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that that help. was a low blow, CIA. <laughs> Well, we, we yeah. get introduced to them earlier well, when Nicolas Cage mm. gets off the boat because we see them spying on him. And we see one guy like, I think yeah. I must be delirious because why the fuck is Nick Cage here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean like, you know, like from Croods, from the Croods too? It's like, I'm 45 years old. Why in the hell would I see the Croods too? <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, my eldest looks at me after a little while and, she, and, the, and, the, the, and they say, um... Is he the dad there? I'm trying to place his voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah he was that's the dad. who he was. <laughs> no, like when I first, like uh, over the holidays, the wife had it on because she was just wanting to watch like animated stuff around the holidays. And she had it on. And mm-hmm. I remember like kind of coming out and hearing the voice going, wait a minute. And she's like, yep, that is exactly who you think it is. It's like, it's no. Nicolas Cage, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. And just for that, I'll watch it. And yeah. I will say, after watching this, um, I have added Paddington 2 to my watch list. Uh, maybe I need to rewatch it, because I think I saw that one in the theater, and everybody loves it, and I think it's fine. <laughs> it's, I mean, I am just fine. kidding. I it's think fine. I played that for laughs. <laughs> well, I uh, don't know. It's, it is a movie that gets lots of love. Um by lot, lots of film buffs too, and I, I like it's well done, but 
Yeah, I, I okay, I, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I sometimes wonder if people are just not expecting a decent movie and they're surprised and they overblow it a bit. I kind of suspect that. Maybe if I rewatch it, I'll gain new appreciation for it. But I remember just it's thinking right. it's, it's fine. It's, it's a, cute. It's a, it's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> It's a it's a it's a yeah. family movie. It's fun. So <laughs> when we finally but, yeah. meet Pedro, uh, we find out that he is a very wealthy wealthy man living in Spain. Um, the CIA seems to think that he is a part of a gun runner, and works for a very deadly cartel. Uh, as it turns out, he is a he is the face of it. It's his cousin who runs it. He just happens just to be the face. Which is good because like they they have such good friendship and like it was kind of like, oh it's disappointing this yeah because like the whole time we're thinking that like the CIA believes that he's holding this girl captive that we saw kidnapped and it turns out that he's the that she's the daughter of a president who's running for election in this uh, local town and he isn't exactly cartel friendly that's why the CIA is involved trying mm-hmm. to get you know trying to save this uh, daughter and for and prevent a nasher so nicholas cage was their in so they planted him with a tracking device how they and that's how they were able to pick him up earlier yeah mm-hmm. exactly this mm-hmm. movie like had a lot of moving parts <laughs> like yes yes it does it and it, it kind of <laughs> yeah but it works because it's just it's a ridiculous Nicolas Cage movie that is super self yeah. self aware. It is just oh kind of God. perfectly <laughs> over the top for what it is. <laughs> yes, it's it's probably one of the most fun movies I've seen in a while. Like I don't know, it's been a while since I actually guess I've gone out and seen a comedy, but this is a good one. This is a this good is. one to check out. This is just fun. Uh, if nothing else, it's worth to check out for the LSD scene. And young Nicolas Cage. But the other stuff's fun, too. I love the relationship between him and oh, the Pedro c- Pascal Could we talk character. about Pedro's uh, Nicolas Cage museum? Oh, God, you're right. We have to So he has that. this, <laughs> like, hidden layer where we think, where, like, Nick Cage mm-hmm. and the CIA first think that's where the girls are being, or the girl is being held. Yeah, it's it's kept as like this super secret thing. It's like Nick, there's this thing I have to show you. He's like super like down about it, and they walk and in. It's it's like the oh Nicolas Cage museum. <laughs> it's a shrine. It yeah, it's a shrine. <laughs> you have that statue of Nicolas Cage that's From really disturbing off. looking with the guns. And then uh, like, what is it? He said he he, he what, said he like, paid my like, god, what, like, that's almost like thirty five hundred for it. No, uh, he asked him, how much did you pay for that? And uh, Pedro Pascal's like, I paid $6,000. $6, it's like, oh my god, this it's is grotesque. disturbing looking. I'll pay, I'll pay you 20000 for 20, it. For and Pedro Pascal's like, it's not for sale. And he, Pedro Pascal's it's just like, no. It's not for part sale. It. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me to part for with that? No. no. But it's <laughs> funny that, like, you know, because it highlighted, like, I guess it played off of like you know his notoriously bad spending habits, <laughs> like yes, <laughs> and how much he overpays for stuff. Like, good God, dude! Yeah, like, here's something I hate: twenty thousand. <laughs> that's not how you negotiate price, bro. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's such a crazy museum i'm trying like i couldn't even name all oh, that. Was God, uh, that there, there was a wicker man <laughs> reference in there yeah there's way more guarding test references and i won't yeah. guess because guarding test was when i completely yeah i kind of forgot about, about that one a little bit too it was like oh yeah and he was good in that that's that's definitely a movie yeah. that exists <laughs> oh yeah there that was one that was referenced quite a bit <laughs> Yes, yes, it got hit pretty heavy. Probably that one might be third behind Conor face off. and uh, his face off was face off. Obviously, it face was off definitely was number one, one. <laughs> reference. There was like a there was a small Wicker Man reference at the end. Um, mm-hmm. it wasn't. I don't think. I think there might have been some. I don't know. I really want to go back and find like that scene, and just have like stills of it, so I could actually look at that mm. shelf and try and. Yeah, yeah that, so that I could museum. try to find oh and God. see if I could like pinpoint everything. You could take still shots yeah. of that like one scene of where you see the wall and have that be one of those things on like 
<laughs> social media where you post it and say, okay, name one movie listed, you know, don't, don't yeah, name no multiples multiple. <laughs> and just have no people repeats. go nuts on it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there was like, yeah. yeah, what was it? Was it Pampers or Huggies that he had in Raising Arizona? Oh God. Yeah. Um, it was something like that. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. Him running around with that <laughs> diaper box. <so. laughs> uh, uh, it was over his head. Yes. <laughs> but yes, that, uh, yeah, I don't know if I have a whole lot left to add other than... It yeah, this movie, fun, and without man. giving yeah. more of the plot away, <laughs> like what later happens. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, there, there's, there's some cool cameos. There is some pretty cool cameos to come, <laughs> to come to, but like the, there's also a pretty good, nice bow that they wrap on it at the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. I like, I like how it ends. I like how... It's just a good movie. This is a good, fun movie. Nicolas Cage very much has a, a sense of humor about himself and where he's at in his career, and it kind of fits perfectly yeah. with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that is everything yes. for this week. Uh, and I think I told you the plan for next week, and then I forgot it, so let me take this up again. So next week, obviously, we're going to be talking about Doctor Strange yep. 2? Yeah. Should we talk about that? That seems like kind of something nobody's going to really care about. That's going to be kind of an indie movie. I don't think anybody's going to talk about no. Doctor Strange 2. Yeah. Maybe. maybe no. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe. What we'll do, because we also have Evolvers on there. If we, if, we, if we feel like it, we'll skip Doctor Strange 2 and just do a double yeah. segment on Evolvers. <laughs> I think that's that going to get more people's will get attention. Like the, uh, that'll definitely help the algorithm. Yeah. And Moon Knight episodes four through six, which again, I'm not sure if anybody's going to talk about that. I think triple episode on Evolvers yeah. next week. <laughs> Luckily, there's just one, but we'll but so we'll much watch Evolvers it two weeks in a row. We'll watch yeah. it three times. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about it three different. <laughs> talk about each of our viewing <laughs> experience. Yeah, because <laughs> Doctor Strange two and Moon Knight, I don't think anybody's no. going to be interested in that crap. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, we got to hit them where they <laughs> where they want to go. But no, we. We definitely have some fun stuff next week. I'm really looking forward to Doc Strange 2. Loving Moon Knight so far. I want to see how it ends. Probably going to rewatch episodes 4 and 5 and then watch the finale over the weekend. And it involves uh, John Delancey in what, an early 90s movie? Yeah. Looks <laughs> like fun. Looks like fun. <laughs> uh, let's see. Anything you want to throw out there before uh, we sign off? No, I'm good. All right. Uh, so everyone yeah. have a good one. I want to go ahead and add some audio credits at the end here. Uh, the theme music you're hearing at the beginning and end of this podcast was uh, written and performed by George Johnson, a very good friend of mine. And my current Patreons are uh, Fel Martins, David Lara, and Lindsay Painkhurst. If you'd like to become a patron, go ahead and follow the link down below. Anything you can provide would be incredibly helpful to this channel. We're barely limping by right now. Uh, I'd love to make this my full-time job, but I'm miles away from that right now. So any help you could provide, just a dollar a month would be amazing. You know you want to. All your friends are doing it.